Hey YouTube, welcome to part 2 of the rattle stand video. This time we'll finish the body of the stands, leaving only the heads for part 3. I hope you enjoy it. Now I'm ready to do the tops on the roller stands here. And this is another illustration of a deviation from plan. The plans called for these tops to be removable. The idea was I'd just have the tube here and whatever top I wanted on, I'd just shove on. I was going to do a cheap angle iron head for catching the iron as it falls out of the saw and a nice ball bearing roller for the other end where there's a bit of weight on it and I want to drag it through. However, I don't have a piece of pipe that's the same size as this one. I was going to put a little stem of solid on it just to sit down in there. Inch, inch and a half into there just to hold it. Wouldn't need much. I don't have that, but I do have this bit of pipe. There's a nice, really neat pit over it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this whole section removable, which it already is. I'm going to weld button hole weld this piece on to the pipe and I'll weld the heads onto these. That will serve both purposes. It just means that uh, if I want to change it at any time, I've just got to make the whole piece rather than just the head. However, given what I built them for, I don't think that's very likely. You can go ahead and build it to the plan. So you can just change the head off or do as I'm doing and just weld the whole thing to the centre section if you don't think you'll ever need to change the head. Always in the interest of using up bits of scrap, I'm going to weld these two shorter pieces of angle iron together to make up one piece for the head of the stand with the angle iron head. Because it's not real thick, I'm going to use a TIG and just run a quick bead down there. Another bead down this side. Doesn't need much in the way of strength. Left a little hole in the bead where I stopped and started again. I think stick's going to be the best way to weld the other one though. When I come to weld the head on, I've uh, done this off camera. I've cut an upside down V on the uh, piece of pipe and that will fit into there and let me weld that into the angle. I'll have to drill this so I can put a button weld in there and that will become the head of my first stand. So I'll just go and do the drilling for the button weld and then I'll come back and give it a quick weld. Right, I'm all prepped, ready for the button weld. I haven't done too many of these. Well, let's see how I go with it. They all need something to be desired. Need more practice at doing them. And now I'm just going to use a stick welder to get this angle onto the top of the post. Just want to try and make sure he's pretty much in the centre. Tack on each side and then I'll weld around him. Too much amperage for that, so I'll need to knock the amperage back. It won't go down that way. Around 75. If I can't, I might have to see if I can get a smaller rod and go a little bit lower. Too low an amperage for that rod. I haven't got much in the way of smaller rods left. I've got a little piece left here and I think maybe one under the table. And that's about it. Ooh, she's not liking that at all. Yeah, it got a bit onto it. Concentrated the heat down into the angle and then just enough back into the pipe to weld. Yeah, that was all right too. Yeah, I should have either cleaned him up properly, got rid of all the gal, and then tigged it, or else waited until I got some smaller rods. The only saving grace of that job is that it'll be underneath and no one will see it. Yes, it's quite a mess. That thin pipe was just way too thin. It needed to be really low on amperage with a fine rod on that. Now I would have had to work to get it into the angle. I think my final solution actually might have been the best. When I concentrated the heat into the angle and just enough onto the pipe to make a weld. But I'm going to make the roller head for the other stand now. 
Now I've got this piece of 40 mil heavy wall pipe and it's almost the right diameter inside to take these bearings. If it wasn't for this little seam in here where the pipe's been joined, it wouldn't, the bearing would fall straight through it. It's only that seam that's going to create enough grip to hold the bearing in place. But I think that's okay. You can make the head of it as big as you see fit. I think the plan's called for 200 millimetres, but I've got 305 here. I think that'll make a pretty decent roll ahead. It should hold anything I want to hold. So I'm just going to use the whole lot of it. I'm going to see if I can tap that bearing down in there. Now just gently tap that just on the edge of the bearing. Battery went flat in my wireless mic, so I've lost the audio there for a little while. I was just explaining that I'm cutting the ends of the axles down to fit the bearings and I'm making the length that I'm cutting about half a millimetre around about a third second of an inch longer than the width of the bearing so that the axle sticks out just slightly past the end of the bearing and that way I can bolt the sides down onto the axle without jamming the bearing. It'll become a little bit clearer when you see me assemble it. Anyway, I got to the point where I was going to thread the ends of the axles and I was wondering what size drill I needed to create a 3 8 inch with word thread. Isn't Google grand? We need a 5 16 drill. We got enough. So I've got the taps I need to do the job. Let's go ahead and drill him. That's got him on the inch. Got to go down an inch and a quarter. Give me enough room to make the full thread. That's that end. That's done. That'll do it. Just got to tap these now. Oh, that tap handle go around there, or oh, just lovely. Taper tap first to get him started. Bit of lard on him. Be a little bit careful with these smaller taps. Using a big handle like this, pretty easy to put too much force on them and snap them. Just got to be very, very gentle with them. Paper thread. Let's just bottoming die start off nice and easy. Alright, this is how it's going to work. Got the roller here with a bearing in one end. Got the axle here, which is just about two millimeters longer than the roller. We drop the axle through and get him into the bearing at the other end. Then we sit this bearing on here, like that. Then we stick this whole thing in and bolt through into there and then that roller is free to spin. It'll become clear once I finish welding up the rest of it I think. So let's get on with that. This is going to fit in here like this but I need to lift it up just slightly off the bottom there. So being this is 50mm and the roller is almost 50mm, we're going to come up just a little bit above the outside lip when we put this on and he's going to fit sort of like that and I've got to cut some piece to go in between these angles to join them up yet. So the next thing to do is to drill that hole before I start welding things together. So I want three eight inch holes. So I put them 30 up. That should leave me about two millimetres over the top. That should be pretty good. Now I'll explain what I'm doing here. I've got the axle. We threaded it before for these bolts put the bearing on this end and the angle on this end and got it all bolted down tight so that bearing still spins in there we've got a small gap about half a millimeter between the angle and the bearing that's plenty of clearance there and then take this bolt out of here and I'll slip it through this end and I'll bolt the angle on the other end as well just like this got to get everything lined up correctly that's it Put this on this end, 
spring washer there. And then tighten this bolt down. I'll just go off camera for a minute to take that over to the vice and get that done. All right, there she is assembled as it should be. Bolts holding that in and these spin freely. So there's our roller. I've got this bit of metal cut. He's got to be welded in there. And then the whole thing gets welded up on top of the stand. All right, let's put a bit of tack on this. Hold him in place. Maybe sparkle ended up in a year then. Maybe stop welding in a hurry. Don't know how it got past the helmet, but it did. I had a few technical issues just here. I missed getting the video of the weld because the camera played up. And once I sorted that out, the remote mic played up and I missed the audio of this section. Basically what I was explaining was that the weld was concentrated down into the heavier metal on the base because the tube was very thin at this point so I concentrated all the heat down into the base and just enough onto the tube to make the weld fuse with it. I didn't really plan on painting these until well, I just cover up the weld areas and stop the rust, the pipes galvanised but it does make it look finished and so far everything else I've built will be painted on the green so I figure why ruin the tradition. The stand sit either side of the hacksaw and they work beautifully. I put the stand with the roller head on the feet inside of the hacksaw because that's where most of the weight goes and I've leveled it up to the height of the hacksaw. The other stand with the angle head on it goes on the cutoff side of the hacksaw just to catch the piece that's coming off. I've set it about uh, a centimetre lower than the axle, about half an inch, so that the piece can fall down onto it and catch it. It works beautifully. Thanks for watching the video. Plans are available on my website. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please click like and subscribe for more. Until next time.